So as the meandering channel continues to build up bigger and bigger meanders, eventually they run into each other. So if we take this diagram I've been using here, and you have erosion on the outside of the bend, both of these bends, you can get you can lose the entire bank between these two corners and develop a new river channel that cuts off uh, this particular meander. That can happen just with the migration of the meanders, but it's more likely to happen during a flood when you have lots of extra erosion and more momentum in the water. But what happens is once the, the main flow develops over here, the geometry of the river changes. Uh, let me say down, view down over this way. And you end up cutting off this part of the channel. Right. And so a lot of times you end up with sediment deposited in here from sort of a back eddy of the of the river flow and this abandoned meander channel is still deeper and at a lower elevation than the floodplain and so it often accumulates water and becomes a lake uh, and so then you go from a river channel facies into deposition in a lake which is typically very fine grained um, sediment and a lot of uh, meandering river channels, there's lots of water, there's lots of nutrients from the sediment that's being brought in, and so there's usually lots of organic matter. So these um, are usually organic, rich, and mostly have uh, mud sized grains accumulating in them. So these lakes are called oxbow lakes, and that's connected to the agricultural use of, of floodplains uh, before there were mechanized tractors. So oxen were uh, hitched to uh, plows with a piece of wood uh, that had holes in it and then sort of a thick beam and then there would be uh, sort of uh, softer saplings that could be bent uh, that were put in uh, through these beams uh, with the oxen, uh, under the oxen's neck. And so the similarity of the shape of these bows that were used to hitch the oxen to the plows and the bends in the river led to this name, Oxbow Lake. Thanks for watching.